the 23rd of February 1701, an English explorer, pirate and buccaneer named William Dampier ordered the crew of his wrecked ship HMS Roebuck to cut up her sails to make tents. The following morning he went ashore a small, remote mid-Atlantic island where he and his crew would be marooned for the next five weeks. This was the unfortunate end to the ill-fated voyage of the first Englishman ever to explore the vast, uncharted land that would later be known as Australia. In 1697, a book titled A New Voyage Around the World was published in England, and it quickly became a sensation. Its author, William Dampier, had returned a few years earlier from the first of three circumnavigations of the Earth he would complete during his lifetime. He had returned penniless, but not alone. With him was an enslaved man named Jaoli from the island of Miangas, in what were then known as the Spice Islands. Despite claiming to have grown close with Jaoli since acquiring him during his voyage, Dampier sold him to an innkeeper in London, who exhibited Jaoli as Prince Giolo, attracting large crowds to his pub. Jaoli died three months later from smallpox. Meanwhile, the popularity of Dampier's account of his circumnavigation attracted the attention of the Admiralty, who gave him command of the fifth-rate 26-gun warship HMS Roebuck. He was commissioned by King William III to explore the as-yet uncharted east coast of New Holland, which was the name given by the Dutch to what is now known as Australia. Dampier set out on the 14th of January, 1699, and his mission went wayward even as it began. He had intended to travel westward round Cape Horn to New Holland, but he ended up leaving too late in the year to make that trip, so instead he decided to take the Brewer route, the Dutch route to the Indies, travelling eastward via the Cape of Good Hope and across the narrower longitudes far south of the equator. But he diverged from that route due to an ebullition of bad blood that would come back to haunt him. Before he had even set sail, Dampier had fallen out with his first lieutenant, George Fisher. According to a 20th century biography of Dampier, he and Fisher were behaving equally as bores without a spark of dignity or self-respect, alternately drinking together, backbiting one another to their confidants, and breaking into personal abuse and even fisticuffs in presence of the crew. By the time they were part way across the Atlantic, Dampier had had Fisher caned, clapped in irons and confined to quarters. The crew had partly sided with Fisher and partly with Dampier, so to avoid a possible mutiny he had the Roebuck call in at Bahia, Brazil, and sent Fisher ashore to be imprisoned. Having regained control of the ship, Dampier headed east, rounded the Cape of Good Hope, and made landfall on the 6th of August 1699 in western New Holland, at a place he named Shark's Bay, a name it more or less bears today. Here Dampier collected and described many specimens of the plant and animal life he found, ordering an artistically gifted member of his crew, believed to be his clerk James Brand, to produce drawings of them, thus earning himself the title of Australia's first English naturalist. He took the Roebuck north and west along the coast, collecting specimens as he went, charting what colonists later named the Dampier Archipelago, an island group that had been continuously inhabited for over 50,000 years by the Yaburara people, among others, 150 of whom would later be killed in the infamous Flying Foam Massacre by colonists, before heading north towards Timor. From there he rounded New Guinea to the north and charted the southern coasts of New Hanover, New Ireland and New Britain then charted what was later named the Dampier Strait, stopping now and then to collect giant clams and other specimens. By the time he got to Crown Island, the condition of the Roebuck was deteriorating alarmingly. Dampier later wrote, In the afternoon I sent my boat ashore to the island to see what convenience there was to haul our vessel ashore in order to be mended, but we could not land. I designed to have stayed among these islands till I had got my pinnace refitted, but having no more than one man who had skill to work upon her, I saw she would be a long time in repairing which was one great reason why I could not prosecute my discoveries further. Suffering from sickness himself and mistrusting his crew, my people being very negligent when I was not upon deck myself, Dampier was forced to abandon the exploration of the east coast of New Holland, the original purpose of his voyage and commission, and headed for Batavia on the island of Java, which is now Jakarta, the capital of Indonesia. At the turn of the 18th century, Batavia was a thriving seaport and the headquarters of the Dutch East India Company in the Indies. Despite all the goods, services and provisions available in the booming trade hub, the mischance that had dogged Dampier's voyage found him again, and he was unable to properly repair his ship. This he blamed on an incompetent ship's carpenter, writing peevishly, I supplied the carpenter with such stores as were necessary for refitting the ship, which proved more leaky after he had caulked her than she was before, so that I was obliged to careen her, for which purpose I hired vessels to take our guns, 
ballast, provision and stores. On the 17th of October 1700, the leaking Roebuck limped from Batavia toward the Cape of Good Hope, where she anchored from late December till the 11th of January. On the 2nd of February she anchored at St Helena for 11 days, and then, finally, staggered on to Ascension Island, where, on the 22nd of February, Dampier deemed that it was now impossible to save the ship, and two days later the Roebuck was run aground in her final resting place. Dampier returned to England in August 1701, having managed to save some of his coastal charts, records of winds and currents, and a few of his specimens. Far from being welcomed as a hero, he was immediately court-martialed for the loss of his ship and the death of his surgeon, John Cressy. Although he was acquitted of these crimes, he was again court-martialed in June 1702 and found guilty of the hard and cruel usage of the lieutenant, George Fisher. Fisher had returned to England from Bahia, where Dampier had left him on his outward journey, and complained to the Admiralty. Dampier was sentenced to forfeit all pay due and deemed unfit to command any of His Majesty's ships. He wasn't deemed unfit for long though, and was soon appointed commander of a 26-gun warship and sent out to engage in the state-sponsored piracy known as privateering during the War of the Spanish Succession. After circumnavigating the globe twice more, Dampier died not long after turning 60, at an unknown date, in unknown circumstances, £2,000 in debt.